Hello friends, I myself, Dr. Bhagwan Mani, from Department of Botany, Thuzaram Chaturchandra College, Baramati. Friends, today I am going to give you idea about very interesting process carried out by some of the plants that is phytoremediation. Actually, this process is helpful for eco-sustainable approach for restoration of contaminated sites. We will get idea about actually this very important process that is phytoremediation. Phytoremediation is nothing but a removing contamination from the soil or water using plants. What are those contaminants? Actually arsenic, cadmium, lead, aluminium, beryllium, copper, iron, mercury, nickel, fluoride and some salts from the saline soil. Why to remove these elements? Because these contaminants toxic to animal even in a small quantities. There are actually five categories of the phytoremediation process. First is phytoextraction, second is phytostabilization, third is phytotransformation, fourth is phytostimulation, fifth is phytovolatization, sixth one rhizofiltration. Now in phyto extraction, actually what is happening, the plant absorbs the contaminants and that absorbed contaminants are transferred to the above part of plant by absorbing, concentrating and precipitating the contaminants. Actually there are two ways of phyto extraction. One of them is natural and another that is assisted. Natural is actually naturally plant absorbs the contaminants. And in case of assisted phyto extraction, there are some use of a chelating agents and microbe is there which helps in the absorption of a contaminants to the plant. Second category of the phytoremediation is phytostabilization. Here actually the plant and specifically roots holds the contaminants. That reduction of a mobility of a contaminants also takes place in this category. And again the roots helps in decreasing the wind blown dust. Along with that one, the contaminants are reduced from their solubility and bioavailability to the food chain. In case of third most important category of the phytoremediation is the phytotransformation in which the phytodegradation of a contaminants takes place in the sense in plant many more metabolic processes takes place and through these metabolic processes the absorbed contaminants are degraded means they are converted from toxic to non-toxic with the help of metabolic processes. Fourth category of the phytoremediation is phytostimulation that is rhizodegradation. Here the rhizodegradation in the sense the contaminants are broken down into non-toxic compounds in the 
root zone of the plant or the rhizosphere area. Fifth category of the phytoremediation is phytovolatization. Here in these categories, plant absorbs the contaminants and contaminants absorbed from the soil transforming them into a volatile forms and then that volatile forms of a contaminants are transferred into the atmosphere through the transpiration process. Last but not the least category that is sixth category of the phytoremediation is rhizofiltration. Here in this category the contaminants are adsorbed or precipitated onto the plant roots or absorption of a contaminants into the solution surrounding the root zone. Here we will get idea about the naturally some plants have a capacity to remove the contaminants in that plants top five phytoremediator plants are there first is indian mustard that is brassica gentia second one white willow that is salix alba third one poplar tree that is populus deletoides fourth one indian grass that is sorghastrum nutans fifth one sunflower that is Helianthus annus. Along with these plants also, other phytoremeter plants are there that are alfalfa, sudan grass, duckweed, bermuda grass, water, hyacinth. Now friends, we will get idea about what are the advantages of this phytoremediation process. Actually, this process can be carried out in situ and ex situ conditions. Second advantage is that amenable to the variety of organic and inorganic compounds. Also, this process is suited to the large group of a contaminants. Most important that is, this process is cost effective, easy to implement, easy to maintain and further it is accepted by the public itself along with that one fewer spread of contaminants via air and water takes place because of removing plants removing sorry contaminants by using the plants also this phytoremediation process helps to conserve the natural resources and this process is eco-friendly, aesthetically pleasing to the public. There are some disadvantages of, advantages of phytoremediation process. First one that is it takes a several years since I will say that it is a lengthy process. Also, phytoremediation process is applicable only to the shallow groundwater soils and sediments. This method is not that much effective to the sites with high contaminants. Again, this method is slower than conventional methods, whatever used for the removing a contaminants from a polluted soil or water. Another disadvantage of this phytoremediation process is that toxicity and bioavailability of a biodegradable are not known. Sometimes this process may be mobilized the contaminants into the groundwater. This process is also affected by the seasonal changes means it does not work in the 
winter season that is also disadvantage of a phytoremediation process and another last but not the least disadvantage of this phytoremediation is that there is a possibility to become a pollution again in the sense when the phyto remediator plants disposed then there is a disposal of a contaminants from accumulated plants is a possible which may cause the pollutions are there some projects which are functioning in the world so there are the many such type projects are there where the plants are used to remove the dangerous contaminants for example phytoremediation of explosive contaminated groundwater in us army army site where the aquatic plants are used to remove the explosive contaminants another from the india the periyar reserve which is located in the gujarat is also important where the aquatic microphyte are used to remove the contaminants now what is need of a biotechnology in phytoremediation so definitely we know that natural or conventional plants fail to meet the requirement in the sense some disadvantages are there of that using the conventional plant so that conventional plant can be improved by genetic manipulation and plant transformation so that is the role that is a need of a biotechnology biotechnologist just to improve the capacity ability of a conventional plant to speed up the absorption of a contaminants from the polluted area for that some novel characters novel traits are to be introduced into the plant which may can be find in a bacteria microbes or other organisms again most important role of biotechnology will have to pay, play that is a better understanding of a molecular basis of pathway involved in the phyto remediation after getting idea about or after having expertise in phyto remediation process one of the question always arises in our mind that is are there job opportunities after completion of a course in phyto remediation process or after doing some research into that one so definitely there are here the expert in phyto remediation can help to solve the local problems in the sense i will give you idea about we know that municipal corporations are depositing the collected domestic sewage at one of the place but the people around that garbage deposited place always denies the never accept that municipal corporation to deposit such a type of a dangerous waste in their area so that problem is between the villages among the cities that can be solved by planting a such a plant which will be able to absorb which will be able to transpire which will be able to stabilize 
the contaminants which are present into that garbage. So there also the fellows, the persons, those who will having expertise in that area will be able to get the job opportunities by solving the local problems. Again, we have seen in this lecture, there are many plants are there naturally growing or sometimes by using the biotechnology techniques transgenic plants can be used to remove the dangerous contaminants from the affected sites for that plants are to be required and that plant can be nurtured can be grown can be multiplied in the nursery itself so there is a job to the experts in developing nursery definitely there are the jobs as a plant scientist businessman so here that we can take the contract we can put some of our proposals about the municipal corporation authorities and we can able to solve their problems of garbage, sewage or of uh, some industries and like that one we can be the entrepreneur or businessman of that area. Again foresters, researchers, such a type of job opportunities are there the fellow who will collect the information, who will be the expert in the phytoremediation process or in the biotechnology. So with this, I have given you idea about the process that is phytoremediation, categories of the phytoremediation process importance of that process, some advantages and disadvantages of this phytoremediation process, job opportunities of the phytoremediation process. I am very much thankful to you for keeping a patience, tolerating me for half an hour. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.